Nau mai anō, hari atu anō, aku mihi whakawhetai, aku whakamānoa, kia koutou kato, ko tahuri mai ki te pai o mata. Ko mihi ngā rangi a hau e kawi ana i te Māori o tō tātou wānanga i te rānei. Welcome to this special breakout episode of Mata, where we're discussing the shock defection of Labour Minister Mika Whaiteri to Te Pāti Māori. This episode is brought to you, as always, by the Public Interest Journalism Fund and Te Māngai Pāho. Now, over the next half hour, we'll be talking to a range of commentators to get their analysis on how we got here and how it could play out come election day. Late last night, news broke that Mika Whaiteri was planning to resign from Labour to join Te Pāti Māori. Whaiteri has been a Labour MP since she won the 2013 by-election following the passing of her mentor Parikura Horomea. This morning, a very tearful Mika Whaiteri confirmed that when she addressed the Fano and the community at Waipatu Marae. Kia whakarongo ake tātou, let's listen. The decision to cross the floor is not an easy one, but it's the right one. This morning, I have officially notified the Speaker that I have resigned from the New Zealand Labour Party and have joined Te Pāti Māori. What makes this even more surprising is Te Pāti Māori had already announced its candidate in Ikoro Rāwhiti. Heather Te Au Skipworth is a highly respected figure due to her involvement with Iron Māori, a huge event in Te Ao Māori. Uh, she stood in Ikoro Rāwhiti last election and as of late last night, her Facebook page still had her as the candidate for the 2023 election. Now, last election, Mika trounced Heather in Ikoro Rāwhiti with 55% of the candidate vote. Heather received just 30%. But here's where the numbers get interesting. In 2020, Labour won 67% of the party vote and Te Pāti Māori took 12%. Uh, and that seat hasn't been flipped in 27 years. So the battle to win this seat is going to be absolutely epic. And joining me to discuss this and and the latest, I'm joined by Ikaro, uh, former Ikaro Rafati candidate and Te Pāti Māori MP Marama Fox and former Labour Party staffer and commentator Morgan Godfrey, tēnā kōrua. Tēnā koe, mihi ngā rangi. Tēnā koe. Ka pai, let's go with you Marama. What's your reaction to the news? Oh man, I've been through all the gambit of reactions since last night when I heard I was uh, crowning myself a new come Juno with the best headline <laughs> I could think of. Um, I saw this morning someone w- had tweeted that uh, Te Pāti Māori are jumping into bed with Labour's sloppy seconds. Um, and I thought about, you know, lacking some grace uh, in thinking about this this jump over. It's probably not an easy one for some people to stomach, but it is mafaro today and we're supposed to have grace and precision. So I'm going to try and have some grace and say that I think it's a master move by JT. The timing is perfect. The um, Prime Minister's overseas. Um, they're within the six months to the election, so there'll be no need for a by-election. Uh, and... It needed to come now if it was going to come at all. Uh, but I do think there might be more fo- more following in uh, her stead. Ka pai. Well, tēnā koe marama e mihi ana ki a Morgan, what's your reaction? Uh, it was a tough one to make sense of last night when uh, Māori Television or Whakata Māori broke the news. I think it was Wena Harawera who had gone uh, digging for it and found it or had been tipped off and... Uh, lots of people, including in the Labour Party, actually, people were messaging last night, what's going on, <laughs> what's happening. You know, thousands of people would have tried to call uh, Mecca, would have tried to call JT, would have been trying to call everyone uh, last night to ask what's happening. But it was quite uh, moving, actually, this morning to watch Mecca explain her reasons in her own voice. And I think those reasons... Uh, they make a lot of sense, uh, a lot of political sense, but they're also, more importantly, principled reasons. And I think her um, invoking that history of Te Kotahi Tanga uh, at Waipatu Marae, uh, her invoking the, the struggle over Māori land over the last 100 years, uh, and then linking it to how little progress has been made in these last uh, five or six years, um, that made a lot of sense, I think, for her as a politician, uh, but also for the wider Māori political movement. So I think there will be a lot of sympathy 
uh, for Mecca, especially as, I mean, it's already starting people are uh, you know, messaging. Uh, sure, I'm sure you're getting messages to me, but mm. you know, Mecca is it's a careerist decision. I think Toe was a little bit, Toe Henare was a mm. little bit mean on RNZ this morning when he said that uh, Mecca had made a, a careerist decision. I think it's more than that. And I think we uh, we should take her at her word that it's, that it's more Should than we? That. Should we, though? I mean, JT is the master crafter of these of these political movements, of these little plays for power. Um, it was apparently discussed last week and broken to Heather at the at the Māori Party College up at Wani Waititi. And words are words. What I tend to look at is people's actions. And I've sat across the benches from a Mecca Whaiteri who has done nothing but smash the Māori Party um, and letting everybody know that the Labour Party uh, had the Māori voice and had uh, the Māori caucus, biggest Māori caucus of all time. And for her to now say that they have been hamstrung, that they haven't had as much growth or development and as they wanted to. Look, I, I believe that Mecca has... Um, has the right heart in making the move. But that's because the colonial British Labour Party has never been the right party for the, for Māori and the Māori vote. And there are dissatisfied Māori in the Labour Party. Lewis the Wall is now standing for the Māori Party. Penny Hinari had once planned to jump out of the Labour Party into the Māori Party. Uh, Willie Jackson was going to stand for the Māori Party. Mm-hmm. We have uh, Rawiri Waititi, who's turned around from opposing um, Tudor Flavel. Mm-hmm. So I think words are words, and what we'll really be seeing is um, this play for the King's Seater, the King's Seat position of the Māori Party at the next election. Uh, yeah, can and I ca- not to forget, to, just adding to, to Marama's mm-hmm. point, that uh, John Tamihiri was one as well. Of course, was a yes, Labour true. Party yeah, MP yeah. in the, from 2008 and the early 2010s. Uh, you know, he was alongside people like Willie smashing the Maori Shane party. Shane Cody, Mark. Do, do, do they run? Do they, well, do they run the risk of being the party for disgruntled Labour defectors? No, I, I think Mahi, what it is is that they actually understand and come to the light that. These these uh, two parties of the revolving door have never had Māori at the forefront of uh, their political aspirations. They've been used as fodder time and time again in every election. Um, they are quickly cast aside when it doesn't serve their purposes, as Labour has documented, as National has documented. And what they are finally seen is what we've known forever, that the true voice for Māori st- sits in the hands of Māori. And our people need to uh, come to that understanding that they are not being taken care of Morgan, under the current political climate, no matter whether it's blue or red. Morgan, do you think that's how voters see it? Oh, it's hard to say. Uh, yeah, I would want to say how people will, how people on the ground will react. I'm sure there will be 100 uh, different reactions. I, I mean, at this point, uh, it's very much, uh, I think Madam is right, that it is a JT engineered move in the sense that the Prime Minister's out of the country, so he mm. uh, there's a limit to what he can do and how he can react. We're within the six-month window, so there's no by-election. Uh, and we're only just over five months out from the election, which means Labour will struggle to find uh, a credible candidate to... Before to we oppose. jump into who that might be, ta- ta- can you talk us through whether this will trigger the Waka jumping uh, legislation, Morgan? Uh, the short answer is yes. Um, not to be too technical, but I think it's section 55 uh, is triggered when the MP who is crossing the floor uh, writes to the Speaker announcing their intention to resign from their party and join another or simply um, resign and join no party. Or it's triggered if the Prime Minister writes to the Speaker uh, and says that there's a two-thirds majority in the party to uh, essentially boot that MP out. So on either reading of the legislation, Mecca probably can't stay uh, in Parliament as an MP uh, if the Speaker or if the Labour Party chooses to to trigger the so-called waka jumping uh, law. So I don't know if they've actually thought that through. I guess, I guess the question oh, is, I would they, Marama? I don't think it matters. 
I don't actually think it matters if she's booted out of Parliament with six minutes to go to the election, she'll spend the entire time electioneering. Mm. She and has, she she has said when she returns to Parliament rules. she'll sit with Te Pāti Māori. Look, I've heard Mika say all sorts of things when she's sitting on the cross benches and when they turn around and sit on the actual benches of government, they say a whole other um, set of words. What I haven't seen Mika do is stand up and speak when it comes to Cyclone Gabriel. I think she has been disenfranchised for a long time. You've got a Kitty Allen speaking. You mm. had a Stuart Nash speaking. You've got the Prime Minister speaking and Mika ever humble standing behind her. I do want to be able to support our mana wahine, and I am going to throw my support in behind her, of course, because we need to be able to um, recognise people have have made mistakes in the past and they don't define who they are. Going with the Labour Party was obviously a mistake, always has been, I'm, in I'm, my mind. I'm just going to... Um... Um, I'm just going to interrupt here because I'm, uh, we're going to uh, introduce um, former Minister of Māori Affairs, Dover Samuels, who did stand for the Lab- uh, who did represent the Labour Party for a very long time in in, in the north. Um, tēnā koe, Dover. Morena, tēnā koe, Mary. Morena. Um, kei ko nei mātou ko Marama ko um, Morgan Hoki. Uh, what's your reaction, Matua, uh, to the news of Mika Whaiteri leaving to go to the Party Māori? I think what you're going to have to have a look at is her track record um, and how <clears throat> how long she's been uh, working in the parliament and on behalf of her, her people. Uh, I, what I can see now, uh, she's, she's not part of the PC ministers that are currently uh, in, the, in, in the... And I say that maybe generalising, but mm. she's, she's, she's battled headwinds. Uh, simply because she's she's been there a, a, a while, and she's a wahine toa, and she has mana. And I'm uh, I, I remember that she, she was also a part of the same regime um, when she was working for Parekura, as well as um, Hipkins and uh, and Jacinda working for Helen Clark. Mm. So you go back, I go back, you know, uh, in, in time a little bit, and she's had a very challenging um, time since she became uh, a member of parliament uh, and when she became a minister. And she wasn't a person um, that took any rubbish. She wasn't interested in a lot of the PC stuff that's going on now that's sort of um, you know the Maori caucus and uh, mm. the uh, the ministers now are sort of absorbed with. While uh, she she did the hard yards and she didn't take any prisoners, Do and you... I think that's rubbed up the new psychology of, in the cabinet right now. Do you think she's been well looked after, Dover? By no, the... I don't. Mm. No, I don't. And, and that'll I've play a, into a, into I've the dissatisfaction a... of yeah. her living. I... I've got to congratulate my mate with the, with the Pinza movement, uh, John Tamahere, uh, for securing Mecha um, <clears throat> at the moment. I've got to say that was a good move. Uh, but she's done the hard yards, and I would have thought that it would have been more prudent uh, for the new prime minister to go on to the marae or to listen to, uh, to Mecha and, and some of her concerns and get some idea about her value, as opposed to going over having a hongi and a kissy kissy with the new king, mm. uh, I, I think that um, he's he's you know he's really undermined her tinoronga uh, and her place not just in Ngati Paro, not just in the place in that electorate, but in the Maori world. Okay. And uh, I, uh, um, you know, I, as I said, I look back in the wilderness. And uh, some of the commentary about uh, people jumping down, I, I, I was guilty of that. I mean, to say I was the mastermind behind Tauhena being named a uh, waka jumper and mm. the whole concept, of course, <laughs> legislation. <laughs> <laughs> the, the whole concept but, led to changes in legislation. But at that time, I mean, we were, there, was, there, was, there was very little support for Maoridom. Yeah, It was devoured completely by New Zealand first. They had the type five there. They had the monopoly. Mm. Yes, which and, and which, that's, that's which became where, Modi Pacific. Yep. Um, Matwood, before we go, will she win it? Uh, I think that she's certainly got a. Uh, she's got two machines on opposite her: the Labour machine as well as the 
the, the National Party and the others, but I think that she has going to work hard. Uh, absolutely, I think Labor will bring up all its fortresses against her. Um, but uh, her credibility lies with her people, and I think that uh, her, her ability and uh, her track record, I mean, she doesn't take any prisoners. And that's the reality of it. And that, that's, that's why it's rubbed up the wrong way with some of the more PC Kapa. ministers and, and, and the Prime Minister this time. And I wish her well. Tēnā koe, te rangatira uh, e mihi ana ki a koe. Tēnā koe, tēnā koutou. Kia ora. Morgan, nā koe. Morgan, what did you make of that? Do you think that's personal? Uh, I think you asked a good question and uh, Matua Dover had a good answer about whether the Labour Party looked after Mecca. I think the truth of, the, of it is is that the Labour Party or whatever party, the National Party, the Green Party even, they don't look after anyone. Uh, so if yeah. you go into Parliament, you're looking after yourself. Uh, and I think every MP has to come to terms with that at one point or another and that you're not going to get any support. You are there alone. You might ostensibly be part of a party, but you're often pushing things using your own personal energy, uh, using your own sort of personal emotional energy as well. Uh, and it takes its toll, and that accumulates for, for people like Mecca, because we have to remember she's been in Parliament longer than just being an MP. She was with uh, Parikura in the 2000s as his uh, chief advisor. So she's actually been in, in the Beehive before, from a different end, of course, but they're all the compromises, small and large, that you have to make, they all accumulate and kind of take their toll. So, I mean, two decades later, it's not surprising that mm. she's saying, oh, I mean, I've had enough. Marama, are we seeing something as massive as 1996, a huge shift within Māori politics, and will she be the last? No, I don't believe she will be the last. I mean, but there's been rumours of Labour Māori MPs jumping um, even when I was there. They're very dissatisfied once they get inside the Labour Party that it's not what they believed it would be. Um, Penny Hinari openly used to talk about he doesn't anymore, he's got a cushy job. But mm. I do think that um, coming up to this election, uh, just like every election when we change the government, Māori get up to vote because they have become dissatisfied with their place in the world. Uh, and that happens every few years when we've had enough of the ruling party because we realise nothing has changed. Our predicament is not better, it's worse. They have managed to push through some very key things that give levers and enable Māori on the ground to be having more of a say. But actually, I believe now as I I work amongst the regions uh, and with regional government departments, that the biggest levers that have been put into legislation to allow Māori on the ground level to have greater and greater voice were done by the Māori Party and continue to resonate even mm-hmm. though they're not in government. And that is ensuring there was a treaty um, or a treaty clause in every piece of legislation that says you must give effect to the principles of te tiriti or waitangi. Boom. We immediately have a lever for every iwi to be walking into a government department and say, we're here to demand our right to our treaty partner for these things to progress. And those embedded changes that are happening at a local level have done so because of the Māori Party, not because of the Labour Party, and she's come home to roost and uh, come home and been emancipated from from the and, and those And the those Labour are the Party. words that have been used this morning by John Tamihiri uh, to quote Bob Marley. We're just going to bring in um, our political commentator now, Shane Te Pau, all the way from... America, I think. Tēnā koe, Shane. Tēnā koe. What does kia this ora, mean? Kia what kia does ora. this mean for the next for the election? I think it, I think this could be a uh, game changer. I think that uh, she will hold her seat and perhaps bounce off um, a possibility of Tamaki Makoto being uh, put in play. I, I I wouldn't have said that otherwise. Um, I think it's going to make a huge uh, change to the political scene. Elaborate on the Tamaki Makoto, you're meaning um, there's going to be a challenge in that seat? Well, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, on your show, I thought that perhaps it was uh, uh, it wasn't a a marquee um, race. It was a Tamahere versus Henare. uh, But now I think it it could be in play. So this might be a uh, a, a double game. It might be... uh, Mm. And, and, and Tamaki Makara, but 
it's, Time will tell. it's it's a labour seat. I mean, elections are a really expensive. Labour has a huge war chest when it comes to that. Yeah. Uh, you know, has JT got what it takes to corral enough resources to battle it? Well, interesting enough, Mahi, I've been to a uh, couple of fundraisers and Labour is struggling on that front. They're not raking in the type of money that they 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 uh, certainly got in, in, in the last election. So, you know, as I say, we will see. Um, I also we'll see uh, how things settle down. There might be a sense of betrayal. Uh, you know, uh, Mecca was elected on a Labour Party ticket, a member of Parliament for uh, for Labour. Following uh, Parikura, I think there might be a, a bit of my my out here. So, you know, as I say, I think time will tell. I, you know, often with these uh, type of uh, political happenings, uh, we read it too early, first day, second day. But let's see what happens in the next two or three weeks. Tēnā koe, Shane. Back to um, back to what you were up to over there. Take care. Thank you for joining us. Kia ora. Kia ora, Morgan. Does. Uh, you know, he makes a point. Um, you know, we're reacting pretty quickly off the news, but once it settles down, do you think people might change their mind? I think the key for, for Mecca is, does she look selfless or does she look selfish? Uh, and if people decide that she looks selfish, I think it's all over. Uh, but if people see the speech that she gave this morning, and if they hear from from JT, um, Debbie gave a quite moving speech as well, uh, and Dawi, of course, gave a, a, an entertaining one. Mm-hmm. Um, if they hear from the co-leaders um, the rationale or the explanation for why this is happening, then maybe people would agree that Mecca looks selfless. Uh, because at the end of the day, any MP is elected because they uh, are selfless or present themselves as selfless representatives did, did, uh, of the people who elect them. Did you so believe it? Really did you believe it, Morgan? When you heard, you know, did you believe in the wairua of the kōrero? Uh, <laughs> I'm quite, yeah, 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 I did. I did. Um, <laughs> I believe the reasons. What I'm cynical about is that if not, if now, why not? Before is always the question. There, it just doesn't have to be asked of mm. of Mecca, but also you kind of ask it of of Rawadi, uh, You ask it of JT uh, mm. and the many others who have. Uh, across the floor, uh, it's always why now when nothing really has actually changed materially in the last 20 years. I mean, what Te Pāti Māori stands for is very much the same as what Tariana Turia stood for mm. uh, back in 2004. So what is the difference between now and then? Mm. Uh, and that's what you kind of have to have to reckon with if you're going that's to present. And, and, and John Tamihiri did say, you know, for him, it's taken him a long time to come to realise what emancipation has meant for him. But in mm. saying that, Marama, you know, it's not exactly mana enhancing for Heather Teo Skipworth. Not at all. Not at all. And th- this is like when the Morgan spoke about parties turning on each other and MPs um, uh, turning on their MPs and MPs realising that they're actually standalone. Um, and you're in by the good graces or you're not. Well, I mean, the Māori Party have not been um, have not been beacons of mana enhancing policy over the years. You know, Tuddy infamously resigned Pete in the news interview without Pete knowing. Um, mm. And then we've got, uh, you know, um, Mana Party was born when when Hone was ousted out. Um, Tudoro took over the leadership in a bit of a play as well. Um, they've had MP uh, people stand, and as soon as they weren't successful, they weren't, you know, looked at again. Mm. I would have loved to be in the party with a group like this because the social media presence is there. They're starting to engage at a real ground grassroots level again, which sort of got missing along the way. I do believe that um, most Māori come to the point where we are the only voice for ourselves, whether it's this Māori party or a young Māori party in the future, but Māori are the only voice for this, for ourselves, and we are growing in this space of rangatiratanga, mm. and the Māori Party is the home for that voice, and I think they've just grown yeah, yeah, up you know, and in, come home. In this electorate, and you'll know this, Māori Mothers, the medium income is 22,000. They care about bread and butter, not iwi politics. That's right. That's um, right. And So where, where in the seat is this seat one? 
Well, Labour are going to come out and smash as much as they can in this seat um, because they won't want to give it up easily. And it's been a long-held Labour um, seat because the people believe that under Labour they are better served. They absolutely do believe that. But there is a strong vote up in Satai Dāwhiti up in the East Coast for the National Party, on, still on the backs of Api Dhanangata. So Papa Papa plays an important role. But definitely when things are bad, the government changes and Māori get up to vote. And there is a growing political awareness amongst our young and our people in Te Tai Rāwhiti. And they need to have their every day taken care of. Mm. They've been devastated by the cyclone. Just putting bread on the table is their key. Homelessness is still the hugest problem facing us. Right. Poverty is still the hugest problem facing us. And real change is not coming from the government. Yeah. It's coming from the iwi and, and from Māori. Themselves. And different kinds of housing and poverty issues. Uh, Ne yes. Morgan, when you think about the bottom of the seat, which is Wainui or Mata, is the end and then takes in the hut and wide it upper. That's right. Yeah, and it's a tough thing for Te Pāti Māori is that this is where Labour is strongest in places like Wainui or Mata uh, in places like uh, the low-lying areas of Napier uh, in parts of Gisborne. This is where the Labour Party can put on its strongest showing and it might be where Te Pāti Māori or Mecca herself uh, struggles to resist the number of activists they'll put on the ground mm. uh, and just the sheer weight of history. There are people who have voted for the Labour Party for generations. Uh, and it takes a lot to change their vote. But, I, I mean, as we know from from the 2005 election, the 1996, I think, uh, election, Māori will change their vote if they think there's some strategic reason for it. Uh, and the, the weird thing about MMP is that the more electorate seats the Māori Party wins and the fewer party votes that it gets the stronger its position actually is in Parliament because they then create uh, what you call an overhang. So if uh, the Māori Party wins, say, three seats, but its party vote only entitles it to two seats, Mm. well, they get their three seats and they get their overhang, uh, and that means they are in a comparatively more powerful position and much more likely to be the kingmakers uh, come the October election. Marama, uh, just final words. Um, Any predictions? Um, I predict that the Māori Party will be the kingmaker and they won't choose a king, that they will stay independent and they will hold the balance of power on every single vote. And then the aspirations of Māori, if they can win that rhetoric, they will win that vote. Ikaro Rafati, who will take that? Oh, look, I think I'm actually going to back Mika on this one. I think she's going to have a very hard road to play. And I think Labour are going to come out all guns blazing as soon as this settles in the next few days. and be all sorts of um, bagging Mika. But I think she will come through this in the end. It will take a lot, though. Uh, Not and a done deal. quickly, Morgan, who do you think might take Ikaro Rafati? Oh, probably Mika, just, just. Ka nui te mahi ki Thank you for joining us uh, today. Kia ora. Nā koe. Kia ora. Kā te he nui te mihi uh, ki aku manuhere tuarangi, whakawātia i a rātou anoa hei matapaki i tēnei kaupapa. Kwa kape, ngā mata mō tēnei wā, nō horo mai.